Hey everybody, Freddy here with another video. This time we're going to be focusing on how to migrate an on-prem Windows file server to Azure files. So we're going to be focusing primarily on creating the file share on Azure, then moving the data to that share. We're going to be looking at performance numbers, how fast you can write data, how fast you can read data. So I hope you like this video, enjoy it, and let's get to it. So there are many reasons why people want to move to the cloud. A lot of them is um, because they don't want to manage hardware. You know, there's a server that has been sitting there for a long time and is just collecting dust. And as we know that dust is not very good for servers. So a lot of times people are looking at a server and they're saying, wow, this server may fail and I want to make sure that my files are protected. And so they don't want to be dealing with cooling. They don't want to be dealing with power outages. They don't want to be dealing with a lot of the maintenance upgrades and patches and a lot of those things. So migrating to the cloud makes sense. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about how to migrate to the cloud. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and go through Azure Files storage requirements. What is, what is required? The first thing you're going to need is an Azure account. Of course, if you don't have that, you need to set that up. Go to ashportal.azure.com, set one up. Once you have that account, that Azure account, then we're going to create what is called an Azure storage account. And again, we're going to go through this step by step. So we're going to go through the Azure storage account creation. Then after that, we're going to set up uh, file shares, share one, share two. And inside of that share, typically we would, we would have directories and under, inside of those directories, we're going to have files just like any other file share, just like anything else that you probably have done in the past. This is exactly the same thing. You're just going to set up a share. Um, and then once you have that share, you're going to be able to mount it on a computer. And then we're going to be start transferring files over. So that's the first thing we're going to focus on. The next thing we're going to focus on is how do you access that file share? There's two ways to access this new file share. One of them is direct cloud access, which means that you're just going to connect to the file share directly from your computer through the cloud. And that means that you're going to access it through port 445, which is an SMB protocol connection. So that means that if you have a firewall that 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 is in your environment, you need to open that up to make sure that the file sh file firewall is for me to say <laughs> the firewall allows that port. You also need a client on the on the computer like a Windows 11, Windows 10 or a Mac or Linux. Any system needs to have a client version that is greater than 3.0. If you have a Windows 10 or Windows 11, you don't have to worry about it. It's already set up by default for you. Another way to do it is using what is called an Azure File Sync. Azure File Sync, what it does is a little bit different. There is not a direct access to the cloud. Uh, in this case, the, the way that it works is it replicates files from an on-prem server to Azure. So you continue using your on-prem server. And what the server does is the server replicates the files to Azure. That means that this gives you better performance because you're still accessing the files from your local server. You're not going directly to the cloud. The server is replicating to the cloud. So this is another option if you're migrating, if you're migrating a server and you don't want to manage um, a server, then the direct access would be the best way. But if you need the performance, then you probably want to go with Azure File Sync. That is a, uh, that is a better option. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and set up that storage account and we're going to go through the process of creating that file share. So as you remember, the first step is you have to have an Azure account. I'm already logged into my Azure account. So if you don't have an account, please go to portal.azure.com and sign up for one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the next step, which is a storage account. So go up to the search bar up here and just type Azure storage accounts and you will see it here. So you just select it. So we're going to create a new account, click on create. So we're going to create a new account, click on create. And the first thing it's going to ask us is a subscription. 
Um, I already have a subscription called Visual Studio. I'm going to use a resource group that I already have here, which is called Storage Resource Group. If you don't have a resource group, please create one because you're going to need one where you put your storage um, account. Then you have to give it a name. I'm going to call it FMD Test Storage. And for the region, I'm going to set it up as Central US just because I have everything in Central US. And the performance, I'm going to leave it as a standard uh, general purpose uh, V2 account. Uh, redundancy, redundancy, you can do my geo redundant. I'm going to just set it up as a local redundant storage account just because it's a lower cost and it gives me some protection as well. The next thing is I'm going to click on next. Um, these things are set up by default, which is required. Um, Requires secure transfer for REST API. Um, this is for encryption, allow enabling public access on containers. Um, I'm going to allow that in this scenario and still enable storage account access key as well. The minimum version of TLS, which is the encryption, is going to be 1.2 and permitted scope for copy operations from any storage account, which is fine. And I'm not going to set up data lake storage gen 2 because this is typically for data lake. So I'm not going to use it for data lake um, blob storage here. Uh, this one, uh, this one is the only one that is enabled. Access tier is hot. The access tier is for frequently accessed data. If you if you're not going to use this data frequently, I would suggest you put it in cool just because it's cheaper. But in this case, if you're going to use it all the time, you want to leave it at hot. Uh, Azure files enable large file share this one by default the file share is going to be a maximum of five terabytes if you need up to a hundred terabytes then you have to enable this box right here so again this is if you need larger than five terabytes otherwise the file storage will be five terabytes maximum so I'm not going to set it up uh, networking enable public access from all networks is fine and I'm going to use the Microsoft Network Routing. This routing preference, um, we're not going to go too much into the details of this, but what this means is that when the client access this share, it's going to use the Microsoft Network, which means that, that the client is going to access the entry point that is that is the closest to him or her and then after that that communication is going to transfer through the microsoft backbone so it's much faster internet routing just means that it's going to go directly to closer to the storage account um, so it's not going to traverse the microsoft backbone so it's 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 um slower typically it's slower all right moving forward data protection I want to talk about data protection a little bit more and what we're going to see here is we're going to see that uh, the first option here is going to be the enable soft delete for blobs and the enable soft delete for containers and enable soft delete for file shares so let's go ahead and go into the into, into the soft delete for a minute just because it's it, I, I believe it's an important topic okay soft delete um, what it what it means is that soft delete is enabled at the storage level account so as you can see when we try to set up the storage account is is asking us if we want to enable soft delete for file shares uh, the first thing it's going to ask us is do we want to enable it then the next thing is going to ask us is how long we want to retain the files so that means that file share can be recovered if deleted but not the individual files Com the complete container not specific files if you want to enable um, the recovery of specific files then you need to use Azure backup so that's something to keep in mind the next thing that you need to keep in mind is that the retention period is configured at the creation of the storage account typically but you can change it at any time you can just go into the storage account click on the configuration and you can share you can change that at any point in time you can set it up for one day or up to 365 days. Um, it does not work on NFS shares, even though it's enabled, it does not work. 
So keep that in mind. And again, the other thing is make sure that you remember that if you want to recover individual files, you have to use Azure Backup. You cannot use soft delete to recover specific files. Moving forward, um, um, enable version. Uh, there is no versioning in, in file share. If you need versioning, you have to use backup. Encryption, um, we're gonna use the managed, the Microsoft managed key. Okay, next thing is gonna be tags. We're not gonna use any tags at the moment, so this is the review. And we go down to the bottom and we say create. Okay, storage account is created. We're gonna to go to resource. And now here is the resource that we just created. Remember I said that you can enable or disable the, the soft delete. Well, you can click, you can see here under the overview, file service, you have um, large files. We did not enable that. And we did not set up Active Directory for this one. And soft delete is enabled for seven days. You can click on this and you can change it at this point. Soft delete seven days. You can click here and you can pretty much change it to up to 365 days from one day to 365 days. So I'm going to leave it at seven days for now. Maximum capacity, as I said, is five terabytes by default. You can change it to a hundred terabytes and the file, the file share upgrade is permanent. So again, if you are going to change this from five to a hundred, you cannot go back. You move it to you move it, and that's pretty much how it stays. Okay, this is file shares. You after you have all this configuration set up, you can click on create a new file share, and you have to give it a name. I'm just gonna call it FMD share, and in this case, it asks you what tier you want. You can have transaction optimized, hot or cool. Uh, transaction optimized is for heavy transaction workloads, and um, this is not for what I need because in this case, I'm just migrating a server to Azure. So I'm just going to say it's going to be hot. The performance IOPS is a thousand egress rate, 60 megabytes per second and ingress is 60 megabytes per second. Maximum capacity is five terabytes and large files is disabled. Okay. So now we can click on create. Okay, so FMD share is created. When you click on it, it is empty because we haven't we haven't copied anything into it at this point. The best thing to do is click on the connect button here. And as you can see, you have Windows, Linux, and Mac. And excuse me. And this will give you the, the script that you need in order for you to connect. So I'm I can just say it's it's gonna be a storage account key. I'm gonna map the drive a Z in this case, and I'm gonna say show me the script. And down here, you can see the script. And at, the, at this point, you can say, go ahead and copy to clipboard. It says copied. See down here on the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the copy. Then you can go into your Windows server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Notepad. And I'm going to paste this script so you can see it. And what it's doing is, is the first thing it's doing is testing the connection. Just gonna say, do I have a connection to port 445? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to open a PowerShell script. And paste this command. And this will attempt to connect. Okay, so there was no error. So that means that there is a connection. So what you can do now is you can select all and copy, paste the script. And what it'll do is it'll go through and try to connect to the file share. So this credential added successfully and it added the Z drive to this location. Okay, at this point, if I open this I can see the FMD share which is here and the easiest thing to do is just um, go to in this case the D drive 
let's just say I'm going to copy this backup folder and I'm going to paste it in here. It's about 449 gigabytes and as you can see the speed it's about 10 megabytes per second. So the write, like I said, write is going to be uh, slower than the read. It's going to write to two different locations. This is the LRS that we selected, which is the local redundant uh, storage, which is which means that is is redundant within one zone, and it's not going to expand multiple regions, multiple zones. It's just redundant in one zone. This is going to take a while. It says that it's going to take about twelve hours. All right, finally that file finished. And as you can see that the performance is not that great. And this brings us to the next topic, which is gonna be um, using not a direct connection to the cloud, but having it as a file sync. So you have this server on-prem where you connect, and then there is a client that synchronizes the files to the cloud. That's a much better option. It's a much faster option because if you're gonna have this connection direct to the cloud writing large files is going to take a while so we're going to discuss that in a, in a different video but now let's go ahead and look at the read at this point so we're going to minimize this file and i'm just going to copy this to the desktop and it says uh, harmful to computers that's fine because i know what it is so now we're going to read it and as you can see it started at 16 megabytes per second so reading the file is much faster is staying at about 10 megabytes per second. The write was, was much slower. So reading this file is gonna take about four minutes. The write took about 20 minutes. So the reading is much faster. Well, that takes place. Let's go ahead and look at the, at the test, at the uh, script that we were given. So all it's doing is testing the connection to make sure that you don't have a firewall. Uh, that you have a, a, a access to the port 445, which is the SMB protocol. And then the next thing is, if it succeeds, as it says here, if it's successful, then what it's going to do is going to save the password because we're not using authentication through Active Directory. We're just using a password that is going to give us access to that. So what it does is it says FMD storage file, just the, uh, the path to the share, and it uses a user which is called FMD test storage user. And it uses this password, which is the key in order to, for you to connect to this storage. So as, as you can see, uh, creating a share and connecting to a share is not very difficult. It's actually very easy. Performance, the right performance is slower than the read performance. Now, if you're going to back up terabytes of data to the cloud, if you do it this way, it's going to take a long time. Um, what I would recommend is that you start with the file sync instead of this direct connection to the cloud. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If there's anything that I missed, anything that you would like to add, please leave it in the comments down below. I always like to hear those comments. I always like to read those comments because it makes the videos better. And I hope you enjoy and look for the next video, which is the file sync. Until next time, take care.